Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to our final installment for our Mental Health America of Hawaii's Munch and Learn series. Today we're going to be focusing on grounding and doing a little bit of practice exercise with that. Uh, my name is Amanda Martinez. I'm the training program manager for Mental Health America of Hawaii. So a little bit of logistics before we get started. We are in a webinar format, so all of your cameras and microphones are automatically turned off, so don't worry about you know, accidentally turning anything on, that should not happen. Uh, today is being recorded and you will also get copies of all the slides here. So like Dr. G has been putting in the chat, um, you can find this recording after today on our YouTube page, but I'm sure you'll also be getting a link in that follow-up email. Right, so if you've attended any of our trainings at Mental Health America of Hawaii, you know that we love to start off with our quotes. So the quote I have for you today is for fast acting relief, try slowing down by Lily Tomlin. So I chose this one not just because part of my self-care routine this past weekend was binge watching Grace and Frankie on Netflix, but sometimes the quickest way to calm ourselves down from those racing thoughts that may get away from us um, or any kind of overwhelming or strong emotions that we may experience really is to kind of slow down and bring us back to the present moment, which is exactly what we're going to be practicing for today uh, with our grounding technique. So a little bit first off, what is that, right? What does that mean, grounding technique? So grounding is really a coping strategy that helps a person manage any overwhelming thoughts, uh, difficult memories, or, or strong <clears throat> uh, emotions. They're just gentle reminders for us to stay focused, right, and really anchor ourselves in the present moment. So when I was doing a little bit of research in, in preparation for today's um, Munch and Learn series, I came across a metaphor that it compared the experience like walking out of a movie theater. Right? So when someone is feeling overwhelmed or those thoughts are just getting caught up um, in racing in their head or maybe they get caught up in a difficult memory, it's still hard, kind of hard to reflect back on. It's almost like watching a mental movie. Right? So grounding techniques can help someone just step out of that dark movie theater, right? Back into the, into the daylight, back into that present environment. Right, so why do we want to use grounding techniques? Why should we do that? There's actually a lot of really great benefits when using grounding techniques. They can help to put a little bit of space or a little bit of distance between a person and their negative thoughts or maybe a difficult memory that keeps popping up. And by creating that space, it really helps to decrease the kind of intensity of that person's feelings or emotions, right? As a result of whatever it is that may be happening on the inside which in turn right, helps to relieve anxiety and really helps to, again, focus on the present environment. We want to reconnect someone with that present moment. And there's a lot of different ways to be able to do this. Um, there are cognitive techniques that can be used. Uh, cognitive grounding techniques are more mindful distractions. And the key word here is being mindful, not just you know, distracting yourself um, to avoid an issue, like getting lost in a TikTok hole for a few hours, which I'm sure some of us are totally guilty of. Um, but, you know, with that being said, you can use music and funny videos that make you laugh, drawing or doodling or any of those kinds of mindful activities. As a, as a short distraction, we kind of want to bookmark the issue uh, for later, right? As long as we return to that issue, we're not just using these kind of distractions as a way to avoid whatever it is that we may be facing, but it is okay to distract yourself every once in a while and, and ground yourself in that way. Now, physical grounding techniques help us to get out of our head, right? And bring us back into our bodies. So this can easily be done by engaging our bodily sensations, right? Really engaging those five senses that we have. So this is what we're actually gonna be practicing for today in just a moment here. Uh, but really quickly before we jump into that, is when should we use grounding techniques, right? Grounding techniques can be used anytime that we are feeling anxious or overwhelmed, right? To help bring us back to the present moment, to calm our nervous systems down when they become activated. But it also helps to practice them even when we feel calm and composed too, right? That's us training our bodies, kind of that mental muscle memory, right? Teaching ourselves to self-regulate. 
So really any of the coping skills that we've covered in this Munch and Learn series are tools that can be practiced to be able to strengthen our mind muscles per se, right? So they come easier to us in times of distress. So it's not something that we should only be turning to when we are feeling anxious and overwhelmed, uh, but that we should also be practicing in those moments of calm so we can kind of teach our bodies and get that routine going to help self regulate. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen really quickly as we go through this exercise altogether that I'm going to walk you through just to minimize these distractions. So we're going to set ourselves up by finding a comfortable position, whatever position you are in, whether that's sitting or standing, just find that comfortable space, planting your feet on the ground. And we're going to start with those deep diaphragmatic breaths that we learned in the very first session. So if you weren't able to attend our first session or you need a reminder um, for these deep breaths is that you can put one hand on your chest, you can put one hand on the top of your stomach, just above your belly button to help guide you. As you're taking in these deep breaths, you want the hand that's on your stomach to move a little more or push out further than the hand that's on your chest, right? So let's start practicing this a few times. We're gonna take a slow, deep breath in through our nose. One, two, three, four. Hold for a second and back out through our mouths for three, two, one. Super simple, okay, let's try it again. We're gonna take a deep breath in through our nose. Hold for as long as is comfortable and then exhale slowly through your mouth. Starting to imagine that tension fall away as you exhale. So continue on with those deep diaphragmatic breaths. And I want you to tune into our first sense that we're gonna cover, which is our sense of sight, right? So look around you. I want you to find five things in the room with you. Maybe it's a pen that's sitting on your desk. Maybe it's the color of your mug. Maybe it's the texture of the wall okay, next to your screen. However big or small, take note of five things that you can see. Wonderful. Okay, next, I'd like you to bring awareness to your sense of touch. Acknowledge four things that you can touch around you. Maybe it's being aware of how your feet are making contact with the ground. If you're wearing shoes or socks, you can notice how your feet feel inside of those shoes or socks. Maybe it's your clothing and how they are resting on your body. You can take your hand and rub it across your pants or maybe across your shirt and notice the texture of your clothing. Maybe you can feel how your body is being supported in whatever you are sitting on. We're acknowledging four things that we can touch. Right? Great. Now I'd like you to focus on your sense of hearing. Take a moment and try to pick out three things that you can hear externally. Right? Not focusing on your thoughts uh, that may be crossing your mind in this moment, but external sounds that you can hear. Maybe it's the fan that's going in the room to keep you cool. Or maybe it's your stomach growling because it's just about lunchtime. Maybe it's the subtle noises of conversation right, amongst people outside or maybe within your household or within your office space. Take note of what is audible to you in this moment. And if you're having trouble identifying something that is audible, that's okay. You can even take note of the absence of that sound and be aware of that in this moment. Next, I'd like you to bring awareness to your sense of smell. I want you to identify um, two things that you can smell 
this might be a subtle sense of something or maybe even the absence of any sense, right? Again, we just wanna be really aware in this present moment of two things that we can smell. Maybe it's the hand soap from when you washed your hand recently or the hint of detergents, right? The smell of a clean, freshly washed face mask since we're all practicing um, safety guidelines. If you have something nice smelling that's within reach, you can intentionally bring that into your sense of awareness as well. Maybe there's a nice um, lavender smelling object near you that you can take a, a short sniff of. But we wanna take note of two things that we can smell. Continuing on with those deep diaphragmatic breaths. Lastly, we're gonna tune into our sense of taste. <clears throat> Maybe there's some lingering flavor from your morning coffee or tea. Maybe it's the taste of fresh mint um, from a piece of gum that you were chewing earlier before, or currently. <laughs> Identify one thing that you can taste. Wonderful. <clears throat> so now that we've gone through each of our five senses in this grounding practice exercise, um, hopefully it helps to feel a little bit more present, right? Really aware of your surrounding environment by engaging all of our bodily sensations. What were five things that we identified with our sense of sight? What were four things that we were able to touch, right? And near us, right? Be tactile in that way. What were um, three things that we can hear, right? Engaging our sense of hearing, right? external things, external noises. Identifying two things that we can smell, right? What kind of scents are in the area around us? And then lastly, identifying one thing that we can taste, right? So bringing awareness to those different bodily sensations help to ground yourself in that moment, really bring you back to the present and hopefully practicing this exercise and, and continuing on to do a grounding exercise like this with the five, four, three, two, one method um, is to help reduce some anxiety that we may be experiencing, right? Reduce our stress levels and really again, ground us in this moment. And so take one last deep diaphragmatic breath, slowly exhale that out releasing this tension. Let me reshare my screen quickly for the last slide here, which is really just if there are any questions, right? Um, like our, the rest of our mini uh, Munch and Learn series, these are meant to be really short, really easy, really digestible for all of you, right? If we can use a little food or eating puns as it is lunchtime. Um, but if there are any questions, feel free to drop it in the chat box. Here's our contact information on the slide as well. Again, you'll be getting a recording of this copy, uh, a copy of this recording as well as the slides here for you. Um, uh, I hope you learned a little bit with this grounding exercise. It helps to kind of prepare uh, beforehand even for this. You can have things around you on your desk if you're working in the office or working remotely. Um, to have something that you can see, something that you can touch, something that you can taste, right? Or engaging your different senses, senses in that way, having something nearby readily available to grab um, can help ground you in that moment, right? Just to engage your senses in that way. Um, you can do this with, with uh, Keiki and adolescents as well. You can have them build their own little grounding toolbox, right? putting their own objects in there, their own different sense. I would help them gauge their bodily sensations as well. So uh, with that, if there aren't any questions, we'll keep it open for another minute or so. Feel free to drop that in any questions that have come up in the chat box. Um, but if there aren't any, that's okay. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, I believe it is. A wonderful rest of your week. Uh, make sure you're practicing that self-care, working that time into your routine. And we'll see you next time for our next training series. Thanks, everyone.